Hello everyone! Dragonflight is giving us a meaningful choice. Perhaps the most meaningful choice that we've ever been given. Who of the Black Dragon Boys do we want to support? Who is going to claim their throne, the title, the leader of the Black Dragonflight, potentially even become the new aspect? Is it going to be Raphion or Sibelian? The choice is ours on who we're going to help out and what a choice to make. Many of you asked me during stream who to pick, who was I going to go for, what do I have to tell for you? And don't you worry, we're going to take the day and we're going to sit down, we're going to talk about these two black dragons. And you will have the information needed to make the most informed choice on who to back up in this battle. May the worthiest dragon win. Starting off with Sabellion. The older, the so-called wiser. He's been there during the days of the Black Dragon Deathwing. When Deathwing was listening to the whispers of the old gods. When the Black Dragonflight got corrupted by the void. And that corruption spread out through the entire Dragonflight. It wasn't just contained to their aspects. In those days, you might know about dragons like Onyxia that we defeated in Onyxia's lair. Nefarian that we've taken on in Blackwing lair. Sinestra that we saw during the Cataclysm. Sibelian was part of that crew of the original black dragons that party with Deathwing. Once upon a time, we saw the orcs invade the world through the dark portal. The first invasion was repelled, the orcs then came back for the second time around. This time, they weren't going to take over Azeroth, they figured, you know, Azeroth is too heavily guarded. Instead, we're gonna go for these powerful artifacts. With these artifacts, we can go to different planets, we can make our portals, and perhaps those planets will put up less resistance. Deathwing saw this as a great opportunity, so he approached the orcs, making a deal with them. Him and his flight, Sibelian included, were gonna help out the orcs get the artifacts. In exchange, the orcs would take a whole bunch of their eggs into Draenor, and would give Deathwing the Grand Tour. He met Nerzul, he saw the Skull of Gul'dan, which he wanted, uh, eventually the eggs were transported in, Deathwing and Sibelian, they made their way to Gorgrond, what we now call Blade's Edge Mountains, and over time, the Alliance figured out what this horde invasion was doing, that they weren't going to let them invade different planets, and they were going to stop them. Now, in order to seal off the Dark Portal, our Ketgar was going to need the Skull of Gul'dan, the skull that was in the possession of Deathwing. Meaning that the Alliance of Lordaeron ventured into the territory, where they saw a whole bunch of the Black Dragon X and they started to smash them, which of course caused the ire of the Black Dragons. They did not stand alone. In the area, there was Gruul and his children, the Grun. They did not look kindly upon these dragons going to the territory. So a massive battle played out. The Alliance of Lordaeron allied with Gruul. Eventually, Gruul earned himself like the Dragon Killer title or the Dragon Slayer. And uh, yeah, Deathwing and Sibelian were actually defeated. Khadgar was smart enough to figure out that instead of just attacking the Black Dragon aspect with his magics, he was actually going to go for the bolts that were holding the metal plates of Deathwing together. And by exposing him, by making him more vulnerable, he eventually forced Deathwing to retreat, Sibelian included. But while Deathwing returned to Azeroth and the Dark Portal closed, Sibelian stayed behind on Drenor, which would eventually become Outlands. So, so far, Sibelian's story has been pretty much serving Deathwing, right? But now he was on his own, and for the longest time, he's just been on Outlands. During the Burning Crusade, we quested with him, we partied with him, we helped him out in taking on Gruul and his children. We know that he made friends with Rexar, and we found out that during their time on Outlands, they made Outlands theirs. They were forced in the fires of that magical planet. Sibelian led them during the greatest trials and tribulations, and so the dragons that are with him are extremely loyal. They even brought black dragon eggs with them. Somehow, some way, they were able to keep these eggs from being transformed into netherwing dragons, as the rest of them were transformed. And our Sibelian basically secured the future of their flight. So when the call came from the Dragon Isles for every dragon to come home, even though he's been doing nothing since the Burning Crusade, Sibelian came back home, did not expect Refion to be there to fight him over this destiny, over the throne, over this claim. Sibelian believes that because he was part of the original crew, because he was part and, and played with Deathwing, and he was like his lieutenant and very close to him, that he is the one that should lead the Black Dragon flight into the future. Of course, we know Deathwing as the bad guy. We know that the Black Dragonflight were massively corrupted, and potentially Sibelian is corrupted as well. We know that there's a lot of darkness and history there. But then, 
we have our boy Refion. Refion is obviously a lot younger than Sibelian, since we're the ones responsible for creating Refion during the Cataclysm. The height of Deathwing breaking out of the world, causing the Cataclysm, trying to bring the Old God's plan to fruition, which was to break out of the prisons and rule the world once more. In that time period, we found a moment and opportunity to make Refion, but it didn't exactly go swimmingly or smoothly. Um, some lines were definitely crossed. Where once upon a time, Alexstrasza was enslaved by the orcs due to the manipulations of Deathwing, now we saw that the black dragons were actually imprisoned and enslaved by the red dragon Rhea, forced to lay eggs, forced to partake in these experiments. But the end result is definitely there. By combining the corpses of whelplings and, and black dragon eggs, and by a little bit of titanic magic, we brought Refion about. And the original plan was for the red dragons to completely control Refion, to make something rather unique, an uncorrupted black dragon which they could control to bring about an earth order again somebody that could protect azeroth itself even when he was still inside of his egg refion could hear what was going on on the outside and he had no intention of playing along the moment he broke out of his shell he took charge he took control and he was ready to do his own plans he was not going to follow the lead of the red dragon flight but he was going to do what they wanted him to do which was to protect azeroth and in his mind first things first they had to cleanse their flight of their corruption no more old god whispers no more black dragons that were listening to the powers of the void each and every one of them that refion knew about so sabellion was off of his radar all those that he knew about they were going to be taken care of and with the job finished with even his father defeated, Refion decided to fly off into previously undiscovered lands. He flew off into Mr. Pandaria, with Pandaria as his new territory. There, it turns out that Refion has been seeing visions. He knows that the Legion is coming to claim Azeroth, and he was going to work. He was going to work to make sure that the world was prepared for their coming. His first plan was to have the world united. Not by bringing the Alliance and the Horde together, by having them hold hands. He wanted one faction to wipe out the other. Eventually, putting his money on Varian Rin and the Alliance to take care of Garrosh, and then dismantle the Horde, to have the Alliance as the one ruling force on Azeroth, a Azeroth united because there was no longer a Horde. Obviously, that idea didn't work out. Varian was not going to dismantle the Horde. He was going to do what a king needed to do. Garrosh was placed on trial. Voltin was made to do war chief. Everybody went back home. And Raphael was quite upset. His first plans failed. But don't worry, he has a lot more plans in mind. During Mr. Pandarium, he met up with the bronze dragon Kairos Dormu on the Timeless Isle. And with the use of time magics, they were going to liberate Garrosh from his trial. They were going to take him into an alternate reality. One in which Garrosh could reform the Horde. They could use that Horde to stand with us against the coming Legion. But Garrosh was not going to be working together with these dragons. The first opportunity he had, he stabbed Kairos in the throat. He did form the Iron Horde, not in the defense of Azeroth, rather to conquer it. The Dark Portal turned red, Wars of the Denor played out, and once again, Refion's plans failed. There was a little bit of storyline with him in Draenor, where he showed up at Taylor's Garrison. Uh, at Ketker's Tower, we saw like a little whelpling fly about. So, potentially, presumably, Refion did make his way to Draenor, but he didn't really play a part in the story. And then, what he saw was going to happen, the coming of the Legion actually played out. But due to his manipulations, because we went to alternate Draenor, there the whole story played out. Our command was summoned onto the world, Gul'dan was sent over to our reality, and this alternate Gul'dan, he opened a gateway for the Legion invasion to happen. So by trying to stop this fate that he had foreseen, he actually made it happen. Which is interesting, because you kind of got to wonder, how did Refion see the coming of the Legion? Perhaps a storyline that they could use. Either way, the Legion invasion happened, one of the greatest expansions to play out, and Refion was nowhere to be seen. He, um had no massive active role in this entire expansion, and the world itself rose up and took care of the Legion. In that time, he did a little bit of research, he did a little bit of study, he was looking for the Dragon Isles, he was looking for ways to cleanse the corruption of the Void, he was looking for ways to cleanse the world of Azeroth and fulfill his aspects, or well, his Black Dragon duties, and he figured out eventually how to take care of Nazoth. We ally with him again in battle for Azeroth, we cleanse Nazov off the planet, and basically Refion fulfilled his duty, he, he cleansed the world and he did what he had to do, and now he could stand in the defense of Azeroth, as surely more threats would rise up. 
That's a Raphion right there, trying to cleanse the corruption within his flight, trying to save the world, but also being very young and often very stupid in his plans, which, you know, sometimes comes back to bite him in the ass. In essence, you got the choice between somebody who was part of the corrupted Deathwing times and did a whole bunch of nasty things for working together with his father, or you can ally yourself with the younger Raphion, who also did a whole bunch of nasty things in order to get his plans done. Both of them perhaps are not the ideal options. But hey, then again, you can also support both of them. Just get both rewards, fill up your bars, all that good stuff. Ultimately, people have been asking me, like, okay, who do you think is going to be the leader of the Black Dragon flight? Who would you ally with as an aspect? If my choice is between these two, I personally would choose Raphion, because even though Raphion has definitely done some shady things, and will most likely do some shady things in the future, at least he's done something. Whereas Sibelian, yeah, he had the curse of just staying on Outland for all this time, and while after the fact they're giving him story, I'm like, you know, I party with Raphion, I was there, Mr. Pandaria, I was there during the Cataclysm, I've seen him around, I, um, I quite like being Team Raphion, but ultimately... I don't think either one of these should be the leader of the Black Dragon Flight. Ultimately, I see either one of these go in a different pathway. I could see that the corruption of the Black Dragon Flight could resurface in a Sibelian. I could see a Raphion actually allying with Razagev to believe that the whole path of the Titans and being controlled by things, that that maybe is something that he would step away from and, and actually ally with the elements. Those are potential storylines. Ultimately, if I had to put my money on someone who would lead the Black Dragon Flight into the brightest future possible, I would give it to Ebonhorn. Save Bet Ebonhorn, that one that we found during Legion in High Mountain. Ebonhorn was cleansed over 10,000 years ago by Hall in High Mountain with the use of a Titan artifact called the Hammer of Kaskarov. After being cleansed, Ebonhorn spent his time with the High Mountain Tauren, and he pretty much guided all the leaders of the High Mountain Tauren through their leadership, through their tenets of, of guiding the Taurens in the land, so he has a lot of experience being a leader. He was in need of rescue when leaving the lands and when the powers to the Void assaulted him, but what leader has not have needed a hand or help in the past? And beyond that, he has been active in the story, he's had leadership roles, so while he might not be as exciting as a Sibelian or Raphion, I could definitely see a Ebonhorn, uh, you know, as a, as a more, more safe and secure choice as, as future leader for the Dragonflight. That would be uh, the safer choice, but again, if I had to make a choice between these two, I would say Raphion. We also have the Collector's Edition, which has a beautiful Raphion pin in there, so that might also be a hint. He is up on the loading screen, and there's no Sibelian to be found. But yeah, by all means, ladies and gentlemen, here you have your information, your informed choice to be made. Sibelian or Raphion, you get to decide. By all means, let me know who you are supporting, and why, of course. And until next time... See ya!